This is the video where I go through all the mistakes that I made when starting my companies. Some of them just didn't get to where I wanted them to go because of some key fundamental failures. Here's the truth of it. Most businesses don't make any money. They're just about getting by. They're just okay. And they might be paying the owner just a basic salary. What do the top 1% do? Well, they make these things happen that I'm about to list with you. Now, number one is having a low value mindset. And here's the big thing that I've learned for all my 20 years in entrepreneurship. The bigger you think, the less competition that you have. Let me give you a key example. We're filming this right now in our hotel. Now this hotel has a potential to have 55 bedrooms. It's got a pub, it's got a reception, it's got a restaurant, it's got a big function room that we're filming in right now. People don't think that's attainable. What they think's attainable is a buy-to-let property or a serviced accommodation. Well, those things to me are just too small-minded. I want to think bigger, and because I think bigger, I do bigger, and I achieve bigger. Mistake number two is putting all your energies into low-value tasks. Now, top entrepreneurs, or what I like to call investorpreneurs, focus on doing high-value tasks, stuff that's going to bring in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 thousands of pounds worth of revenue into the business. Now, let me tell you what I did in the early days, and for way too long, and I knew I was mucking up, was I was out as a gigging entertainer. That's how I started. Started. I would bring in two, three hundred pounds for an hour, but that stopped me from focusing on the stuff that was going to bring in a hundred thousand pound deal. You see, the plumber that's still working on the tools rather than employing another plumber to be on the tools and going out there and winning big contracts. That's the difference. You know, if you think about someone like Charlie Mullins from Pimlico Plumbers, probably the richest plumber in the world, he focused on growing his business rather than operating his business. He spent all his time on high value tasks and ended up up employing a thousand plus plumbers. Now, whatever you think of the guy, he focused on the right stuff to build a commercially profitable enterprise. Now, if you look at the three stages of entrepreneurship that I go through, the solopreneur, into the entrepreneur, into the investorpreneur. Charlie Mullins and I like to think myself are trying to focus on being an investorpreneur. If we look at the three stages, the solopreneur is doing the same stuff day in, day out. They're a one-man band. They're earning an income, but they're focusing on that day-to-day -day income. The next stage is the entrepreneur. They're starting to build a management team around the business. They're the marketeer of the business. They're bringing in income, but they're still managing the top-level stuff. The investorpreneur, this is where where you want to get to. They build their their business so it looks like an investment, like they're investing into property or buying Google shares. They're building their business so they can work without them and they're building it so someone wants to buy it in the future. Now that flipping mindset, that high value operating work ethic is going to allow you to build something so much more valuable and it will speed up your process to building that commercially profitable enterprise. Number three for me was investing way too much time in in me too trade. Now, what do I call me too trade? That's most businesses. Someone looks and goes, oh, they're making a bit of money over there. Me too, I'll have a go at that. So I started out as an event prop hire business doing bouncy castles and kids' parties. It's so cheap to get into that trade. You need such a little amount of money. The barrier to entry is so low that you have so much competition. What you want to do is try and make you as high barrier to entry as possible. This is my example that I gave earlier about my hotel compared to a bed and breakfast, a six bedroom bed and breakfast, most people could remortgage their house, get some money from friends and family and set up a six bedroom bed and breakfast. To set up a 55 bedroom hotel is much higher barrier to entry so you have a lot less competition and then you can charge accordingly and actually be paid for your efforts in entrepreneurship. If you're spending way too much time on this low barrier to entry stuff, that is going to stifle your gross, you'll hit a glass ceiling, you'll have loads of competition and you'll end up just swapping time for money. Number four is allowing your ego to not allow you to employ the right people. This is a big mistake. One of the big phrases in business is, if you want a job done well, do it yourself. And it is stupidity on so many levels because you only got 24 hours in a day. And if you look at high achievers, people that get stuff done, it's because they've employed a great team around them that accelerates their growth and accelerates the amount of time they have to get more stuff done. I've never had an ego 
about employing someone that's better than me. But I see so many people that have that. If you can find someone that's better at administration or better at doing the bookkeeping or better at marketing or better at operations than you, you should be employing those people. So when I started out, I would pay these people before I paid myself because I saw them as an investment. And that was a big key difference to me. So I was okay not earning anything because I was out gigging and buying and selling and doing stuff to pay for my living. So I would use the business's profits to build a team. And the most amazing value in a business is the team that runs it. Because if you're a key man or a key person, one man band, you will only get so much multiples for when you sell your business. And the discipline for building a business is always build a business to sell, even if you have no intention of selling it because that discipline allows you to build an investment rather than just a profitable job. Mistake number five is investing your time in businesses that start from zero each month. What we want is regularity of income and regularity of the customer trading with us. Now, if you think about the wedding trade, you know, brides and grooms, they use you, then they don't need you anymore unless they're getting divorced. And so you do all that work to fulfill a customer's needs and then they never need you again. That's a business that starts from zero each month. The businesses that have been much easier for me are the ones that have customers that trade with you four times in quick succession, like a supermarket, like renting a property from you, or like my day nursery business. They come in on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday. They get to know our staff, we build rapport, and the customers in these types of businesses are far less fickle. A restaurant, for example, has very fickle customers because if a new restaurant opens up, even if you're better, people want to go and try it and you get a knock-on trade for a period of time while the market tests the competition. So choose businesses that don't start from zero each month that have far more regularity. Think about property rentals, insurance, mortgages, education, accountancy, solicitors, those types of businesses where people trade with you very regularly, you can have a much more loyal customer and a business usually in those types of sectors are worth a lot more and people want to buy into those industries. Venture capitalists are buying day nurseries. Venture capitalists are buying financial services and insurance brokerage businesses because they know the customer is much less fickle and there's a strong regularity of income. Number six, the big mistake is getting naff and stupid advice from what are quote unquote professionals. So this is accountants, solicitors, financial advisors, bank managers. These people that are actually not successful themselves, they have a good income, they have a very steady income, but if you're entrepreneurial and you want to go for it in life, you need to find the bank manager that's looking after very successful people. If you're really into property and you want to own a big property portfolio, you need to seek out an accountant that's got a big property portfolio that's actually doing the do. And unfortunately, Professional advice is usually handed on from family member to family member. Dad that's always used this accountant, that's always used this solicitor, and now by rights, you've got to use this accountant and this solicitor. Well, why? That could be stupidity on so many levels. You need to go and find out a solicitor and accountant that is on another level that's gonna push you rather than just keep you on that steady eddy approach. And I see this happen way too often. Mistake number seven is not focusing on margin. Lots of business owners compete on price and really what we wanna do is be proud of our margin, making sure we've got enough gross profit so that we can eventually make a good net profit. Your gross profit when you're an SME business and that's an SME business is something turning up to 50 million quid. You need to make sure that margin is your friend so that you can invest in customer cuddles. That means the ability to really look after your customers, to shop and order them and surprise and delight them and do some stuff for free every now and then because the relationship's so good with them. When you compete on price, you can't do any of that stuff because it's a race to the bottom. Let's look at the cleaning industry. You know, lots of office blocks need their carpets cleaned, their desks cleaned, the toilets cleaned, and that will go to a procurement director in a business that will put it out to three people for quotes and get the best prices. Now that procurement director, say, has a really tall building and he wants all the windows cleaned on floor number 42. Now, not every cleaner can do that. That goes to a specialist set of industry, a high ropes or a high level cleaner that's got all this fan dabby dozy equipment, there might only be 20 of those in the country compared to the three, four, five thousand just normal commercial cleaning contractors. And because there's a niche, they have a better margin and they can charge accordingly and they have less competition in the marketplace because they're specialists, because they're a niche. And that's where we come up with the phrases riches in niches. Gross profit leads to net profit. 
profit. Lots of businesses work to 30, 40% GPs. That's just not enough to having a great business and you need lots of scowl if you're working on those low gross profit margins. Mistake eight is letting setbacks stop you from going again. People might employ someone, they steal from them, or a dodgy customer lets you down. You get knocked and therefore you keep a small mindset, a closed mindset from opening up into the industry. I speak to so many people on my podcast that have had staff leave them and start up and compete with them. That's gonna happen, gang. It's always gonna happen. It's gonna happen again in the future. It's happened yesterday. It happens all the time. So if you've been let down before, you haven't been paid, you've been knocked, you've had dodgy staff members, you've opened a premises, it didn't work out and you've had to take five steps foot back but you never want to go forward again that can really hold you back sometimes you have to kiss a few frogs to find your prince in life when things go wrong you learn from it there's no such thing as failure only feedback it makes you better don't let negativity and bad stuff stop you from going again just knowledge up read some more books listen to more podcasts come to this youtube channel surround yourself by good people and if there was one final point to this is remember this you become the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with. And if you are around average mindset, you're gonna have an average mindset. Get yourself around really super successful people because that will rub off on you and you'll pick up golden nuggets from them to elevate the growth of your business. And unfortunately, and this is what I learned, is lots of your closest friends and family will have a smaller mindset when it comes to entrepreneurship. You need to get around successful entrepreneurs and business owners because they're gonna push you to think bigger and better better being the crucial thing. You know, if you want to have certain things, you've got to become better and do better stuff to have that. B times do equal have. If you become better and you do better things, you'll have the things that you want. And the top tip for that is remember, you become the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. If you've loved this video and you want to learn more, why don't you come and see me live at one of my seminars? You can book on to my seminars by going to my website, jamesinclair.net, or drop us a message in the comment and my team will come back to you and tell you the price is there's such good value for money. Only a few hundred quid to come and see me live, spend the whole day with me, accelerating the growth of your business.